Hi everyone and welcome to Dennis Deepcast, the 46th installment of this fine YouTube series. Today I'm going to talk about a couple of classic albums. Let's see what happens. What's a classic record? I don't know, you tell me. Um, there are a couple of records over, over time, many actually that are like bona fide classics. 10 out of 10s and today I picked 10 of those and I want to share them with you uh, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I was supposed to do something different today but uh, the friend that I was supposed to do it with uh, couldn't make it so they'll wait till next week and it's going to be quite exciting. Um, so I was like, oh, let's do something simple, fast and fun. Uh, second thing that I thought about was that Christmas is coming up which is wild and uh, in Sweden they said that the best use gift is the vinyl LP. So I figured like if you want to give uh, a record to your niece or nephew or a friend or a brother or mom or dad, um, maybe this is a good starting point, just some classic records. Um, if you're a record collector, you should own these. I'm not, I'm just saying. Um, and if you want to start collecting records, this might be a good starting point. Uh, yeah, it's all in chronological order because I'm an in insane person. And most of these records are kind of old, but they are fantastic. Let's do it. So where do you start if you want to get into some soul music or funk music or something just wildly out of this world? Why not start with Sly and Family Stone's record Stand from 1969. Sly and Family Stone is a funk soul collective from LA. Uh, they made their record recording debut in 1967 and um, this record is one of the coolest records of all time. I, I could also uh, talk about There's a Riot Going On from 1971 which is also just a sprawling masterpiece. Um, I think this record is a bit more concise, it's a bit more focused and it's just a wonderful wonderful record. If you want to dip your toes in the sort of uh, funk and, and soul music that uh, exploded beyond the borders of what soul was. Um, Slime Family Stone is a fucking excellent starting point. Let's stick around in LA for a short second. Uh, where do you go if you want to start digging into some like what, what we call maybe classic rock, sort of? Um, I mean, you can start with a band like The Doors, of course. The Doors, one of my favorite bands, they're fucking phenomenal. But why not? Up for the band that everyone in LA said that's the cool band. Doors are kind of dorky. I mean I love the Doors, don't get me wrong, I was obsessed with the Doors for years and years. But if Doors are the dorky band, what, what's the cool band? And I'm of course talking about love with a record Forever Changes. This is one of the best records ever made. It should have been one of the biggest records ever made but uh, Arthur Lee, the enigmatic singer and songwriter of love, refused to tour, honestly refused to play outside of Los Angeles. They put out a couple of records that kind of like garage rocky stuff and then I think this is the third record for every change. It's, it's orchestral, it's sprawling, it's like a masterpiece and uh, unfortunately the band kind of fell apart after this record. There are a couple of more love records that are they're all kind of worth checking out because they're pretty amazing but uh, no one really cared and Arthur Lee spent most of his life in prison and in the early 2000s when he got released in prison this record was a bona fide cult classic and um, he was lucky enough to be able to tour this record the way it should be with like a horn section and an orchestra and, and people loved it uh, so he got to you know he got to taste a little bit of that glory before he passed away and this is a record that everybody should own. So where do you start if you want to dig into some hard rock music? Of course you start in Birmingham and you start in Volume 4, Black Sabbath from 1972. Also the year I was born, that's pretty awesome. Um, I mean I don't really need to talk about Black Sabbath, they're one of the greatest rock bands of all time. Um, I could actually pick any of the first six Black Sabbath records. Uh, the first one I ever heard was Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. So that 
Sabbath Letter 7 and Sabotage, they hold like a special place in my heart because they're like the first two Black Sabbath records I heard. Um, when I get into to hard rock and heavy metal, uh, a lot of stuff that was playing, I mean, Ozzy was one of the first hard rock artists I got into, but he was like Bark at the Moon Ozzy, uh, uh, you know, Diary of a Madman Ozzy. And then a friend of mine, a friend of my dad's actually said, oh, you're into hard rock, I'll lend you some records. And he gave me the first couple of Black Sabbath records and the first couple of Motorhead records. And I was scared beyond my wits and I loved it. And uh, Black Sabbath, yeah, one of the greatest bands of all time. Volume four, any of the six first Black Sabbath records, uh, any of the two Dio Black Sabbath records. Yeah, one of these days, Black Sabbath, best to worst. Wouldn't that be something? An artist that uh, was born in 1946, made her recording debut in, in 1967. And in 1974, when this record came out, it's her 15th record. I'm of course talking about Dolly Parton. Uh, this is her 15th record in seven years. Jolene is one of my favorite records. If you want to ever dig into country music, maybe Jolene is a fantastic starting point. Um, she wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You for this album, but every song on this record it's a bona fide hit. The record is, is crisp, clean, the playing is marvelous, the production is fantastic. All the songs are super economic. It's like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, done. I mean, all the songs are around two minutes long and every single one of them is a hit. Dolly Parton, the incredibly fascinating artist. She had had some ups and downs in her career, but as of now, she's like, you know, one of the, one of the most amazing artists uh, of the last century and this century. And um, this is a good starting point if you want to dig into some Dolly Parton music and if you want to dig into some country music, check it out. Speaking of amazing women with amazing careers, Kate Bush first record, 1978. I don't have the kite cover, but it doesn't matter. It's still a fantastic record. Uh, this is where you go if you want to explore some arty 80s rock music. Even though the record is from 1978, it does feel like a lot of, like it feels very ahead of its time. Um, Kate Bush was 19 years old when this record came out. Um, Wuthering Heights, of course, you all know that song. Um, was the first number one hit single in the UK um, by a woman that was written by the artist herself, which is a kind of a sad state of affairs. Uh, I know it was you got punished with it if you watched um, Stranger Things, but you know this is a fantastic record, and she's an amazing artist, and I cannot recommend Kate Bush enough. And this is a record that everybody should have in their record collection. Another record from 1978, and this is also one of those records that define a genre and define a whole world. Um, if you ever want to get into like synth music, why not buy Kraftwerk's The Man Machine or The Mensch Machine from 1978. Um, Kraftwerk started, was formed in Düsseldorf in 1970 and they started as kind of like a proggy kraut rock kind of band and then one day they discovered synthesizers and there is, is as they say, history. Uh, this is a wonderful record that, um, I mean, it really did change the world. Everything that we loved with the 80s and everything that was punishing about the 80s it's kind of because craft work. Um, when I met my, my wife, um, she was trying to explain to her dad uh, what kind of guy I was. And her dad crassly said, oh, he's one of those guys that listens to craft work. <laughs> yes, it's true. Post-punk, you say. You're curious about post-punk. You want to dig into some post-punk. What's a good starting point? Well, 
there is no better starting point than Joint Division Unknown Pleasure, Pleasures, Pleasure, Unknown Pleasure from 1979, one of the best records ever written and recorded. Um, yeah, Curtis killed himself the following year, right before their second record, Closer, came out. And uh, Joy Division you cannot underestimate the importance that they had on music, on post-punk and punk and just music in general. And this album is just, uh, I mean, it's amazing, magnificent. And it's one of those records you can listen to 10,000 times without, you know, getting tired of it. I think it's maybe true for all these records that it's just like these records can be listened to every day for the rest of your life, you know, never grow tired of them. Joy Division. Joy Division, of course, broke up and became New Order and they could also have a couple of records on this classic records list, but maybe next time. So you don't want that post-punk stuff, huh? It's too artsy for you. You want just more punk? Maybe some 70s punk. Oh, you heard The Clash already. You heard The Sex Pistols. The Damned, yeah, maybe. But what about The Buscocks? The Buscocks, truthfully, they're behind everything that we know as pop punk, which, I'm not a massive fan of pop punk, so maybe it's a bit problematic. But the songwriting skill of Buzz Cox and just, just their output is amazing. This is their, this is a comp, this is a singles compilation. Um, first two records are great, but they were really prolific and they put out seven inches all the time. And this record is from 1979, and the first record came out in 1978. But they already had a single collection out the next year. Singles going steady, and uh, I mean, some of the greatest pop songs of all time is on this record. And if you want to start like getting into punk rock, and specifically more like poppy punk or power pop, Buscocks, singles going steady. Compilations can be pretty awesome. <laughs> No, no, please don't ask me about hardcore. Please don't ask me where to start with hardcore. That's just impossible. I've talked about Minor Threat too many times already. You know, Black Flag, I don't know. Are there records 10 out of 10s? Maybe. Suicide Tendencies? I don't know. What about The Misfits? <laughs> Walk Among Us. The Misfits debut album. Potentially one of the greatest bands of all time. Um, Misfits as a band was a bit of a sprawling mess. And, and uh, the, the follow-up to this, Wolf's Blood Earth AD, is a chaotic hardcore record. But on this, their, their debut album, I mean, it's, it's just fantastic. It's not really a hardcore record. It, it is kind of like more punkish, tons of sing-alongs. And it's just... You need it in your record collection uh, to, a to be able to live a worthy and full life. You need this record in your record collection. That's just, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And the last record, uh, classic record, because we know all these records, they are 10 out of 10, right? There, it, there's, there's no two ways about it. Um, the last record is... It's not a new, I mean, it's a new record, but it's not a new record. Um, but what, if you want to have some like quirky, danceable club pop music, where do you start? Well, maybe you can start with Bjork's second record, Post, from 1995. Eh, yeah, it's not working out. Um, Bjork, of course. From Iceland, she was in the band The Sugar Cubes. I talked about Björk's debut record already on one of my episodes. Um, her first couple of records are fantastic. Then she weird off into really arty territory. Um, a lot of it's fantastic, a lot of it's arty. Uh, but this is just like a perfect album. I would say the first two, maybe three Björk records are, are just phenomenal. Um, and if you wanna 
check out some cool propulsive uh, danceable sort of club pop music no better starting point than Björk uh, and there you have it 10 classic records that you need to have in your record collection I mean this is just scratching the surface there's so many when I started thinking about this there's so many good records out there there's so many good artists um, I could easily do like 10 of these I was thinking first I'll maybe just do one about the 60s and then one about the 70s and one about the 80s it's not too late I might do that um, but yeah what are these what what which ones do you own of these classic records um, tell me in the comments below and I will be very happy until next time Stay well, my friends. Bye-bye.